Now tonight I want you to turn with me to Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Now Hebrews is in the New Testament, and it comes after 2 Timothy. So you turn over there somewhere and you'll find Hebrews. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who had fled to refuge, for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. There are some things that never change. One of them, of course, is God. He never changes. He is the same as he's always been. Now the world has changed rapidly since we were here in 1975. I went to the TED conference to speak in all the rain in Monterey. They had about 600 scientists there. TED means the T is for technology, the E is for entertainment, the D is for design. And it's considered one of the top level conferences of top CEOs and chairmen and presidents of computer companies and scientific companies in the world. And I was the first religious speaker they've ever had. And I didn't know how they would receive me. I decided I wouldn't touch on science because I don't know anything about it. I just stuck to the gospel. I, I knew that most of them, it had been new to them just as their science talks were new to me. But while I listened to some of those talks, and I heard something about the future that scientists are planning for the next few years, and how rapidly our world is changing. The other day I read that knowledge is doubling every 75 days. You can see why these young people have heavy loads on their backs of books that they have to carry to school. They have to learn so much more than we did when I was a boy. When I was a boy, I didn't even carry any books to school. We, we just went to school and tried to listen to what the teacher had to say and make a few notes and be ready for an exam if one came along. We went to a country school in North Carolina. But today, Young people have to really study and work hard, especially at colleges and universities. The world is moving so fast that inventions that were supposed to save time and strength are now sending us to psychiatrists <laughs> and helping destroy our families. These new inventions that were supposed to save time are adding time so that we don't have enough time to do anything anymore except see the IRS when they come. <laughs> Next week's uh, magazine cover story was on the planets and the new solar system scientists are discovering new planets, new worlds, new galaxies that when I took astronomy they had no idea that they existed. We have many types of stars today. We have athletic stars, movie stars, religious stars, but they all fade. All the other stars of heaven may fall, but Jesus is called a fixed star. He never will fall. Ever since we were here in 1975, 
I've seen changes in the Albuquerque skyline. I've seen all those houses that have been built up against the mountains. And there's such a mixture of people here from all the different ethnic groups I guess there is in America. And you blend together and have developed a marvelous culture here. And we've spent a great deal of time in Europe in the years since we saw you. And we have seen the battles between the political leaders over the euro dollar, and the economic changes that they're planning for Europe that may or may not work. Many people think they won't work. There's a crisis everywhere you look. Franklin has spent a lot of time in Bolsonaro, taking all kinds of food stuff and help to them. And the same in North Korea and all these places where people are starving. We work together to send help to those people in those places. And we raise money for that. So this is a period of great change. But it's a period also of social change. The greatest problems facing us today are social injustice, which is worldwide. Then there's the armament problem. We thought that was all finished until we saw the pictures on television of the thousands upon thousands of chemical bombs and biological bombs, and they don't know what to do with them. They can't destroy them. They try to destroy them, but they turn around and the wind blows the other way. What is man going to do? He's being pressed from all sides. Then there's the race problem. And we see that it flaring up in some of our big cities. Thank God, I think, in many parts of the country, it's getting better. And we thank God for people. <laughs> that are working on this great problem because we have a mixture of the races of the world here. All ethnic groups in the world are here in our country. And it's amazing that we get along as well as we do. And I thank God for those people because they've contributed to the culture and to the welfare and the greatness of America. Thank God for all of them. And especially the love of the Native Americans who have welcomed us. because this was their country. And we came in, our forefathers did. And you know the whole story, I don't have to say any more about that. Then there's the poverty problem, even in America. You can go down certain streets in New York City and see people lying on the, in the wintertime on the cold sidewalk, many of them starving to death. Then there's the economic problems, the terrible debts that we all owe, personal problems like drug and alcohol use, it's produced AIDS, loneliness. In fact, when I preach a sermon on loneliness, we have more letters that come in than any other subject I can preach on because so many people are lonely today. Even if you live in a big family or live with people all around you, you're lonely. It's a cosmic loneliness. And we don't know how to be alone. And in the midst of all these changes, there are certain things that have not changed. The laws of nature, gravity, has not changed. They're the fixed facts of the universe, have not changed. Certain things have always been the same. And the Bible teaches that God has not changed. I am the Lord God, I change not. Malachi 3, 6, 7. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of a man that he should change. 
Numbers 23 says. There is no variableness, neither shadow of turning with God, James says. Not even the flicker of an eyelash change in God. He's from everlasting to everlasting. He had no beginning. He has no end. Do you understand that? I don't. But that's what we're taught that, about God. And I believe that with all my heart. He will never change. But you must change. You have to change. If you're ever to see the inside of the kingdom of God. You don't have to come the way we ask you to come. But you come and surrender your heart and your life to him and say, Lord, I'm yours. Forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. The word repentance means that you change. You change your way of living.